Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cellular and Wireless Unmasked. It's an exciting day today. We have a new sponsor. I'm coming to you today from the offices of Dynamico Flexible Office Space located here in San Francisco. And we're gonna jump into our topic today, DAS, Distributed Antenna Systems. But before we get into DAS, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the Dynamico space here in San Francisco. Dynamico Space is a shared office hub located in the Philippine Consulate Building at 447 Stockton Street in San Francisco. Dynamico is right near the Financial District and Union Square with convenient parking at the Sutter Stockton Garage. Dynamico Space offers workstations, offices, and conference rooms with clean, modern amenities and flexible rates. High-speed Wi-Fi and 24-7 access are included, so for more information or schedule the tour, go to dynamico.space, that's D-Y-N-A-M-I-C-O dot S-P-A-C-E, or click on the link below. Thank you. Okay, our topic today is DAS, Distributed Antenna Systems. What are they and how do they help? How do you use them? Uh, what are their components and what's the nomenclature associated with DAS, Distributed Antenna Systems? This is most often a, a cellular play. There is also a public safety play. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But really what a distributed antenna system is meant to do is take the signals from your average cell tower and get them inside a building. A lot of buildings have what's called a loss coefficient. They're not friendly to your RF signal. So when the signals get to the building, they can't penetrate. Therefore, the users inside have a poor cellular experience. So what you can do is you can install a DAS in the building to bring those signals in. There's a couple different ways to do it, which we'll talk about, but there is one nomenclature item I wanted to address first. There are a number of types of DAS and there's a nomenclature floating around passive versus active DAS. Now, way back when in cellular, there really was a true passive DAS. If you had a warehouse and the cellular coverage wasn't very good, you couldn't get reception inside the building, you could place a high gain antenna on top of your roof to receive the cellular signals and you could place coax with another antenna inside the building and there's nothing active here. This is all passive. The signals would come into this antenna, they would get brought into the building via the coax, which is a passive component, then you'd be able to talk back to the cellular network. True passive DAS. That's what I see when I see passive DAS. What this gets confused with is sometimes a, a BDA or a bi-directional amplifier. When you have a BDA style system, some folks refer to that as a passive DAS, when really this is actually an active component that requires power. So for me, when I hear the, the term passive DAS, I don't like to use that. I like to use a BDA or off-air DAS. Off-air DAS uses a radio signal from outside to bring it in. An active DAS, you can do active many ways. You can do a fiber distributed DAS. You can do a BDA for a cellular signals inside a building. But the two main types of DAS your BDA or off air and your radio feed DAS. So many of the DAS systems you see in airports and large stadiums and big buildings, they don't pull the off air signal from the local cell tower, they're fed with a radio feed. So instead of repeating that signal inside the building, they actually have a small room the DAS head end or the DAS hub with radios provided by the cellular wireless providers and that signal gets generated here and it gets distributed throughout the building via a network of antennas and or remotes. That's your active radio feed DAS. The BDA style DAS is a little bit different. Instead of a pure passive play here, the BDA style DAS has a radio component, it does not generate signals, it just repeats. A rooftop antenna, it pulls this signal down to this repeater, it gets repeated, it gets boosted, and then it gets distributed throughout the building. 
that your off-air, off-air system uses a BDA. The cellular providers, your AT&T's, your Verizon, and your T-Mobile, they don't like these. They don't like bi BDA, bi-directional amplifiers. They don't like them. Why? Let's talk about that. Why would you not want someone to help bring your signals into this building and help out all these poor people who don't have good cellular service? Why wouldn't you want to help them? Here's why. If this macro site that you're using with this bi-directional amplifier to help these people out is already at 100% capacity, it's got room for 100 users and it's got 100 users on it right now. If you put a BDA system in this building and this building has say 20 people in it right now, you're now putting these 20 people on this macro site which is already at 100% capacity. Now you're at 120% capacity. Now you've got low bandwidth, drop calls, a poor network experience. So the carriers generally don't like BDAs. They will approve them in some rare cases and because their channels that they're using are licensed channels, you typically have to get a retransmission agreement to use a BDA and that's a paperwork intensive process with the carriers. Again, they generally don't approve BDAs. More often than not, if you're going to build a DAS for cellular signals, you're going to use a radio fed DAS. It's just the way it is. And this will actually take these 20 people and they won't compete for service on the macro network, the tower network. They're going to have their own radio inside here and make their own signal and have a really nice experience. So let's talk a little bit more about the architecture of the BDA systems and the radio fed systems. Okay, so let's talk about BDAs, bi-directional amplifiers, and that type of a system for DAS. And when I mean bi-directional amplifiers, I mean in a system for a building, you've got your BDA at some location inside the building, you've got service antennas in the building, and you've got a donor antenna on the roof. Now what the amplifier does, it's bi-directional, takes the signals from the user's mobile, up into the service antenna through the coaxial system. The BDA then sends that signal out of the donor antenna to the local cell site. This is your donor, this is the donor antenna. The cell site's the donor. It also takes the cell site signals from the tower into the donor antenna, down through the BDA, and then out to the user's mobile. It amplifies both directions, hence the nomenclature by directional amplifier. Nice units. Um, these were very common uh, in the past in cellular. Nowadays, you mostly see BDAs when it comes to ERRCS, emergency responder, radio communication systems. Uh, sometimes people just call them ERCs, but it's public safety DAS. They typically use a BDA, a bi directional amplifier. They don't amplify cellular, they amplify their radio signals, the VHF, the UHF and uh, there's a couple bands for 700, 800 that they use, um, they being public safety officers, police, fire, ambulance, homeland security. Most of your building codes and local codes say that you have to have good communication ability for your first responders in any of your buildings, offices, schools, residential properties, and if you can't get acceptable levels of signal and audio quality, you have to install a public safety DAS an ERCS, an emergency responder radio communication system. This is typically a BDA system. Um, it's very common to have multiple bands, VHF, UHF, 700, 800. Uh, so you have to have multiple BDAs in some cases and that's a public safety DAS. You can do cellular, you can do a cellular system. Again, it's complicated. It involves the carrier approval. Um, it's typically not done. Again, it exacerbates a capacity problem. It can create performance issues if the BDA system's not tuned right. It can add a lot of noise to the system that confuses base stations and makes the mobile experience for others very poor. So generally the carriers don't like BDAs. One thing to note too when you're going to use a BDA on a commercial cellular system, the signals used by the carriers are licensed. Okay. 
They're not like Wi-Fi where you have 2.4 and 5 gig bands that are unlicensed. These are signals that these carriers pay millions and billions of dollars to use and they pay the FCC so they have approval to use these signals. Now when you use a BDA, you're repeating licensed signals. So you're repeating the carrier's signals. If they don't want you to repeat that, they have full authority to say, turn off that BDA. You're causing us problems. We don't want it. So if you're using a BDA for cellular, work with the carriers, understand what you're doing and make sure you design it and do it right. Otherwise, if you don't, the carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, can knock on your door and say, if you have a system, turn it off. It's our signals and you're screwing up our system. So be careful with BDAs. Now let's talk about the radio feed DAS. Okay, let's talk about a radio feed DAS. Um, this is very common. We're talking about a radio feed DAS. This is what you typically get. Uh, inside a big stadium, a large office building, uh, an airport, radio feed DAS. So the carriers, the wireless carriers, your T-Mobile, your uh, Verizon AT&T's, they will donate a radio or they'll put in uh, macro equipment, uh, radio small cell equipment that will feed the DAS, the distributed antenna system. It does not use your cell towers. You've got your cell tower network out here and it does not use this at all. Instead of this radio gear feeding this building, you have donated radios from the wireless operators. Wireless operator one, wireless operator two. This is a two operator little diagram I've drawn for you here. What you have in the building, let's say this is just a basic office building. You have a head end or a hub somewhere in the building. It can be in the top of the building, the bottom of the building. It can be pretty much anywhere. It can even be off site and you can use a fiber link to get back to the building. Let's not complicate things too much. We'll say this is Inside the building, the head end or the hub, uh, those are equivalent terms. You've got your DAS equipment. Now this is active equipment with points of interface that take the radio signals from wireless carrier one, wireless carrier two. It can be one frequency band, it can be two, it can be three, it can be four, it can be up to five different uh, frequency bands into the same DAS, okay? Now, each carrier can have multiple frequencies or each carrier can just give you one radio with one frequency and what they do, those signals feed the DAS, right? And this is inside the head end or the hub. Then those signals typically get uh, converted to light via a fiber network and they go out into uh, remotes. So this medium here is most often fiber to remote one, remote two. You can have one remote, you can have hundreds of remotes, you can have thousands of remotes. Some of the larger stadiums are thousand remotes all over the stadium, all joined by fiber to carry those signals from the head end out to the remotes. Um, from there, you plug in a coaxial distribution system here and the amount of antennas varies. It can be one antenna, it can be five antennas, it's just based upon your link budget and your design. And then those remotes feed that coaxial system of passives, splitters, couplers, tappers, uh, and then they feed the service antennas, which then provide you that service link to your mobile device. So this is how a radio feed DAS works. It does not use the macro system. It generates its own signal that is only used by the folks that are inside that airport, inside that stadium with their own mobile device. They might see the signal from the outdoor, but this system is designed to be so much stronger that the mobile prefers this signal over the outdoor macro signal. You design it so that it has dominance over the macro network. Now, if you're lucky, sometimes these stadiums, these buildings, these you know, bank vaults that are really, really well built or downstairs uh, in a lower parking basement. You don't even get signals from the macro site. So it's really easy to design a DAS there. You have only one option, it's the DAS. But in cases where you've got some radio signals coming in from outdoors, you wanna make sure that your indoor DAS is dominant. And that is the signal that the mobile devices will prefer, this signal. So again, this is very basic. You've got a head end or a hub. You've got carrier radios, wireless operator one, wireless operator two. They feed the DAS. This can go out via coax to a small array of antennas, but in a case where you have to go over long distances, more than a couple of hundred feet, they typically use a fiber link to remotes. All the remotes do 
is then convert from light on the fiber back to RF energy, which is what you get with your radio feeds from the carriers, and it makes the uh, RF signal uh, propagate via your antenna system. So that's how a radio feed DAS goes, okay? We'll talk about a couple of small things and we'll wrap this up. So today we've been talking primarily about IDAS, indoor DAS. The I stands for indoor, again, distributed antenna systems. There is also an ODAS, an outdoor distributed antenna system. This has kind of fallen out of favor with a lot of the carriers. They prefer the small cell model. Um, it's a little bit more efficient for them. Uh, ODAS was really popular in the early uh, 2000s, 2010, 2015. Um, you don't see a lot of ODAS outdoors. You do sometimes. But really what ODAS was, was, was built to do is extend macro coverage where the coverage challenge was, was very difficult or costly to deploy. If you had a, a mountain canyon road and to cover that mountain canyon road was difficult, you had to put in a lot of different cellular sites to cover it because of the mountainous terrain, maybe it had a lot of trees, and it became really expensive to deploy so many macro sites each macro site can cost up to half a million dollars to, to permit, design, and build. These can be very, very expensive. So to do that so many times made covering this mountain road economically unfeasible. So what ODAS, one of the reasons ODAS was born is you could put in one macro site, then you could put DAS nodes along that road, and you could cover that road with DAS nodes, ODAS nodes, outdoor DAS nodes, cheaper than if you built all different macro sites. ODAS is expensive. They're typically connected with fiber uh, on poles. They can be aerial, they can be underground. All the antennas have to be above ground. Um, permitting is difficult. It's, it's tough in jurisdictions. The gear is expensive. But all that together is cheaper in most cases than building multiple macro sites along that route to cover that mountain road or that difficult to cover area. So you still see a lot of DAS um, in places like the Sunset area of San Francisco. You see DAS in Las Vegas. You see DAS in New York City. You see DAS all over the world. These networks were very, very popular in the early 2000s. Don't see a lot today. You see more small cells versus DAS. And we'll do a video on small cells. But what I really wanted to do today, guys, was show you some of the concepts behind distributed antenna systems, differences between a, a BDA system, bi-directional amplifier, and a radio feed DAS, where the carriers will give you a radio and it plums into the DAS and then you distribute it throughout the building, the stadium, huge library, office park, whatever it might be. Uh, those are your primary kinds of DAS. Uh, BDA being your outdoor off-air feed, radio feed being, hey, here's your radio and we're gonna use that signal inside our building. I really hope you learned a little bit today, guys. Any questions, throw them down in the comments. As always, I'd prefer you subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And I do want a, uh, a special shout out to Dynamico today. Flexible office space here in San Francisco. They were kind enough to let me film here today. Uh, there'll be more information about Dynamico. You can ask me and we can link you up with those and you can run an office space in here if you need or just need a space for the day. Thanks again, guys. Look for future videos coming from Cellular and Wireless Unmasked. Have a great day.